Yeah, it was actually a very cool event, or still is a very cool event for, for ICP. We did a number of workshops on chain fusion, explaining how ICP can uh, work together with all other uh, chains, how chain fusion works, how you can build smart contracts on ICP that talk to other smart con contracts and other chains, how other chains can make uh, use of the superpowers of ICP. My keynote was about AI and why AI should be on blockchain. Now AI is special in the sense that it's not just code that you can analyze very easily. You don't see the logic of it, right? It's just like a bunch of numbers. And so you don't really know whether that AI model is the one that you believe you're talking to, right? I mean, it's like very hard to, to figure out, uh, is this AI correct? So that's like one reason why you want to have like an AI on chains that actually it's verifiable that the AI model was built properly, that the AI outputs are computed properly by the same AI model everybody else uses. The AI can't just be run on any other chain, right? Like we have been a lot of people you know, say like the AI is run on chain or like this application is run on chain. Actually, it's not because like all blockchains are not powerful enough to do that. Then you need to have computational power, right? Every computer right now casually does like two million Ethereum equivalent transactions per second. You need to have the computational power on chain just to be able to start the stealing this AI. And this is still early days, you know, we've optimized a lot and now we're working on supporting AI models with GPUs that actually the smart contract can have access to, to GPUs that can even run fast to process more data. And so at the end of the day, could the whole end to end from AI learning, inference, like, all aspects of it can really be on chain. You know, half a year ago, maybe there were like 10 AI projects on ICP, and now we have like 60 projects building, so it's really like accelerated quite too fast, which is, I mean, I'm very happy to see that, right? We'll see that we're doing something right here when, when people come and actually start building like that. Well, it's very trivial, right? I mean, your AI is like a critical infrastructure. It deals with a lot of data. And so it needs to be running on a secure, trustworthy system. And the only secure, trustworthy system really is like a blockchain, like ICP. So you need to run AI on ICP for that reason. The big players in AI don't, don't want to give up control, right? Control is power. And so if you're like, like a big industry player and then you want to control your AI, you want to control the data. So it's all about control, right? Obviously, the Web3 should be the beating heart of AI because you want to control your own data, you want to make sure that your data is governed by smart contract and only, you know, it can be used for learning certain things but not other things. Uh, that's how it should be, whether it's going to be like that, it's going to be a fight, obviously. The Motoko language here is very well suited for that, just the uh, way it, it is uh, design with all this type safety and all that kind of stuff. It's like an easier language for, for AI to, to, to understand, right? The other part is like just the way like uh, smart contracts are built on ICP, how uh, their data, their code and data is managed, right? And that actually allows you to like upgrade your dev very easily with AI as well. If you want to develop an application with AI, you need to be able to iterate because otherwise you do it once, you deploy it, and then you're sort of stuck. You need to be able to iterate on that data and actually also here the architecture of, uh, of ICP is in some sense almost geared towards that, right? Mm -hmm.